Hello fellow gamers, I'm Jonathan Pruitt and this is Jim Davis. And with the tumultuous times in which we live, where brother is pitted against brother, sister against sister, I, I just have one thing to ask. Can't we all just gith along? It's gith on WebDM. Today's show is brought to you by Audible, a great place to get inspiration for your characters and campaigns. Visit audible.com slash webdm or text webdm to 500-500. Start listening with a 30-day Audible trial and your first audiobook, plus two Audible originals are free. We recommend downloading and listening to The Last Wish, the first stories of The Witcher. It's all the grim fairy tale darkness you need to get inspired for your gaming in 2020. You don't even have to toss a coin to support a Witcher if you sign up today. Once again, go to audible.com slash webdm or text webdm to 500-500. All right, Jim, let's get around to one of these races here. That being... Another, the, another yes. one that no one plays. Huh? <laughs> Sorry, another one that no one plays. Another one that no one plays. <laughs> what makes me sad is, like, the GIF, they have such a, a rich place in D&D &D lore and history. Sure, right. Right? I mean, it is the origination of, like, the term gish. Yep, for one, right? right? This is where the gish concept comes from. Yeah, the yeah. fighter mage mm -hmm, type. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but, you know, like like many races in D&D, &D, they had to throw off the shackles of sure. oppression. Yeah, yeah. Um, They're yet another escaped elithid slave mm -hmm. race kind well, of thing. Well, the elithids eventually are going to get theirs. I mean, I, yeah, someone, I, you know, maybe we just need to, like, find the Eleuthiard or whatever, whichever one of the second edition products where they're, like, you know, outline the whole situation for the Illithids. Because I am I just am like, how many of these Darrow, Dwergar, Gifts, and others? What stands out to you when, when thinking about the lore and the place that this can have in your campaign world? They embody that otherworldly aspect of D&D. Yeah. Of D&D being a larger world, of having a cosmos, of having a place. And, like, they're from... You know, when they first sort of show up, or where they show up a lot as traditional villains, the Gith, uh, the Gith Yankee, they, you know, they're from the astral plane. They, they mm -hmm. enter into our world through portals and magic and things like that. But they're not elementals, demons, uh, or something. They're just a people. Yeah, they're an alien yeah. race, <laughs> right? Yeah. That, that live there. Sometimes they're they're sort of like referred to as human-like or former human. I kind of take that stance. I, I imagine personally in my own personal D and D cosmology, most of the uh, the the races or, or you know options for players are descended or magically bred <laughs> from yeah. humans. You know, there's a human represents the baseline, and um, I, I, that's what I like. Though I like the otherworldliness. Otherworldliness. Like the first time I encountered them when I, it was when I ran, first got into D and D, and I didn't yet know about like all the editions of D and D. I didn't uh -huh. yet quite understand that like we were playing second edition uh, at the time that there was a first and then even stuff before that yeah, and yeah. so i remember like coming across the fiend folio and the fiend folio the first edition fiend folio is this great uh book that came out in like uh, 81 and it's uh it's monsters from white dwarf magazine mm -hmm. which at the time did more than just the games workshop warhammer stuff it was like the uk's gaming magazine so a lot of dd stuff would appear in there early on and they created this book fiend folio and the gith show up in it as, as one of the options and they grace sort of the cover of it. And it's this iconic yellow skin, sort of like weird misshapen face and these just like giant silver swords. Mm -hmm. And it just like, it, that captured it to me. I, I like the Fiend Folio because it's just a weird book, <laughs> you know, and yeah. sort of like represents an alternate monster manual than, you know, uh, what, was, what else was out at the time. And they've, so they've always stuck with me. I caught them again around uh, Planescape and expanded on the lore a bit for me there. You know, you get uh, a bit of, you know, why, what are they doing in the astral plane? And what are those uh, gifts arriving over there in Limbo? Mm -hmm. There's just a lot of promise to them. Yeah, they're just um, trying to keep their shit together in Limbo. <laughs> when I think about it, though, I can't think of, like, an iconic gif, like, adventure. I can't think of an iconic gif moment. You know, they're, they're not necessarily, like, a... Um, a big campaign villain, although I know there was maybe a later, a third edition, or possibly a fourth edition adventure path that featured them heavily at some point, but I'm, like I said, I'm not really familiar with that one. So I feel like I'm still waiting for Gith to blow up and be something more than just like a weird astral human. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, human. Maybe when they finally get around to Spelljammer. First off, I I, I I kind of love the the kind of hate triangle <laughs> yeah. between a Lithids, uh -huh. Gith Yankee, Gith Zirai. It's a very interesting uh, dynamic. Uh -huh. it, it totally reminds me of basically like emotions and the Vulcans and the Romulans. Oh sure, sure. Like right. and they look very similar. Uh -huh. but they have this common thing that's that's what split them. Like how mm. how to 
how to interact with this thing or deal with this thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this yeah. third this third party. When it comes to uh, like races like this, I mean, mm-hmm. it, it can be also equated to, you know, like dark elves and regular elves. You always yeah, have yeah. the one that took the wrong turn oh, sure, versus yeah, the yeah. enlightened Dwarves one. Are, that kind of it's a commonality, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, it, just the, the paths, paths taken and the paths not. Yeah. Um, I, I see this one as different than some of those. Like, the the, the, it, the end result ends up being the same. You've got a, the right. good guys and the bad guys yeah. from this ancestry, but whereas I look at, say, like, the the split between High Elves and, and Drow and the messiness there and the fact that, like, changes every edition the story of this, so we've got, like, a lot of different variations on it, which I guess is kind of cool, uh, but not so much if you're looking for, like, a one true canon uh, mm-hmm. answer. And it's like, there's, a, there's this hint of just, like, Corlon being just sort of a, a, a unreasonable god, uh, you know, manipulation on the form of, of like, everybody, just overreaction. Mm-hmm. I think in that sense, it captures the sort of spirit of the Fae, the elfinness of elves uh, very well. But it does result to me in seeing, like, well, Drow just kind of the wrong end of the stick. Like, aren't they tricked and, like, should we show them some kind of compassion and like, <laughs> or something? Whereas the Gith like choose this, they they overthrow the Illithid with the help of Gith, the the leader, and, as well as some others. Um, um, and so there's this this split. What should we do now? How, where should we go from here? Mm-hmm. We've overthrown our our immediate oppressors. We have a chance to start a new something. And then there's this divide. And I find that very natural. Yeah. As as opposed to the kind of like contrived divides that you see from some of the other uh, splits in the D&D ancestries. Like, especially, say, with dwarves. I really think it's like, dwarves, you guys have literally abandoned the Dwergar down there. They did what they needed to do su- to survive, but, like, y'all could have gone after them. Like, <laughs> it seems like everybody on those, on those conflicts, when, especially when they involve gods, is just, like, petty and, and belligerent for no reason. Whereas I see this one could easily have evolved over time. Well, what should we do? Well, we need to go after them. We, we, we cannot rest mm-hmm. until we have destroyed all the Illithid. Yeah, and we got to get ours. Yeah, and we, we got to get ours and we, and we deserve, deserve ours. Yes, yeah. You know? and, mm-hmm. and then the others are like, well, you know, we, we want our freedom. Let's not jeopardize it. Let's not uh, mm-hmm. risk it further. Let's find somewhere where we can get, gather in strength and, and you know, establish ourselves first. And so you have this sort of dichotomy. And that, those are just two differences of opinion that, that results in this split which then goes on to get reinforced by, you know, bitter rivalries and, and vagaries of, of, of D&D lore, really. But that initial split there I find very compelling because it suggests a more complex world where, where people are arguing and, and you almost want to play out this campaign. You almost want to, like... Oh, the, the, the split of gifts? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to like almost want to like have this as a mini thing where you're, you're saying, like, all right, everybody's kind of making the same sort of character, make humans or make... I wouldn't let them... I wouldn't necessarily make these gifts as they're presented mechanically, but definitely, you know, uh, culturally and... It's like, yeah, let's play that out. What is it like? How do you gather your allies to overthrow these Lithid? How do you actually do it? You know, what's the aftermath look like? Where do you go? Who do you seek shelter with? And it creates two interesting peoples to populate your D&D world with. And they're not, like, locked into this. The Giths, are, the Githyanki are just that way because they're, they're space pirates. You know, like, <laughs> they have mm-hmm. a, they live in a, they live on dead gods in the astral realm and, like, move into uh, the material realm to like j- mm-hmm. age, just ne- when they need to age, right? Like when they need to have children, yeah. when they children need to do anything. <laughs> they come into our world uh, or whatever. So um, yeah, so I like it. It's one of those things where I try in most worlds to put like a couple of Gith Yonki outposts mm-hmm. and like I, I don't ever make it like the central thing, but it's just a weird thing. Like what are those weird people doing there? Yeah. Why do they have a red dragon? And like where do they come and go from? But you can imagine that in a lot of these worlds the Gith Yonki just like find an out-of-the-way quiet spot, establish a, a, a gate there or something, and they're just like, this is where they train and live and, and whatever, mm-hmm. and then uh, before going back in the astral. I see them more as, like, space Vikings. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Like, they live in Valhalla. Sure. And then they come to this world to procreate and all that. But yeah, Otherwise, okay, they're yeah. kind of these eternal, these weirdly eternal beings yeah, okay. that, so, that, okay. that live out their, their fighting and that's all they want is conquest and, you know, and, yeah. and glory and get what's theirs. And yeah, I don't yeah. know. I mean, it... They're in a transitionary phase between, like, mythic and then the sort of the day-to-day needs of being in a civilization. But you yeah. can imagine, like, down the road... Yeah. If it continues, people might worship them as mm-hmm. otherworldly figures. I like that. Or, or cool. just like, because uh, I was I wanting, I was wanting to bring in a Marvel reference anyway, but uh-huh. like Asgardians, a little yeah. bit, right? Yeah, for real. You know, they have these little, they have some powers, and we'll get to the mechanics in a second and why they're a little lacking. <laughs> oh, sorry, I had to clear my throat. <laughs> Thanos' lieutenant with the spear. 
Oh yeah, and, yeah. And I, you know, you know which one I'm talking about. Yeah, uh-huh. Like when I'm sitting there reading through this, and I look at that dude, like the the picture of the gif. I'm like, oh my god, it's that same yes. guy that Okoye kills in Endgame, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. gets stabbed in the one before that. And it's just like same kind of messed up face, <laughs> the pointed ears. Yeah, he's like a space guy. Anyway, yeah, yeah. Um, they're just sort of space. I sometimes use Githyanki in place of elves. Yeah. Um, the servitors of Leng in, in Lamb Between Two Rivers are based off of Gif Yonke. Like, they're just the picture of it. Like, that looks like a cloned person to me. Mm-hmm. Like, you look at the one, the picture in the Monster Manual, it's just like, that looks like a created being. It looks like an engineered being. It's yeah. sort of like the sallow skin, the, the, the sort of uniform features, weird utilitarian look that they have. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it looks to me like oh, it's force grown in a in a, <laughs> a vat of creation somewhere. These things were were made to be the <laughs> armies of the Elithids. Yeah, they're sort of bio constructs. We've talked a lot about like the Gith Yankee, and I think there's there's a lot that there to mind. Maybe we can keep going. But what do you think about the Gith Sarai? Like, well, the Gith Sarai, like I I love the idea. Of, yeah. Hey hey, listen, this horrible thing happened. Let's let's try to rise above it. Let's right. become. Let's go get enlightened and see what what it what we are actually made of. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then they decide, find and know ourselves first. Exactly, yeah. and so what better way to do that than surround ourselves with chaos sure. to be the bastion of completing ourselves and our right. souls yeah, yeah. and hardening uh, that, that lawful concept mm. within. Yeah. Because if you can tame chaos itself, you can do anything. Right? Certainly, right. Yeah, and it, 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 they, they fulfill a, a very necessary like just game role in that they make they open up limbo to be a gameable space. Right. Right, and until then, there's some of the outer planes where you're just like, this is cool, but how am I supposed to run a dungeon or an mm-hmm. adventure set here? And so the fact that you... have you, a D100 table that you roll every round oh God, to see yeah, what happens. Yeah, <laughs> but, you know, then the, the part of me goes, well, you'd, you'd want a table to tell you how what, often what, you should roll. Then then you roll on... <laughs> this like, table that tells you which table to roll on. Yeah, yeah no. Uh, I like tables that tell you what dice to roll. Personally. Yeah. Like, you know, roll, roll this, this die. And whatever what die, die, die you roll, that's the table you roll on? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, or one of those all die tables where it's like you roll one of each and they tell you, you know, like this uh, is how this little changes. Bit different. Yeah, yeah, a little oh, no, bit different. Yeah, that would be like awesome. Little subtle changes. So that's where I feel about like the gifts, right? They open up Limbo to be a, a gameable space. They can, they can create these manifest zones where they stabilize the chaotic soup of Limbo. They can teach this skill uh, to, to others. And in, I believe in Planescape, it's more like a wisdom-based mm-hmm. sort of effect of you imposing your will. Uh, and then the higher your wisdom, the, the greater radius that you can affect. And um, but it makes it that. Otherwise, you're having to deal with like slotty and worried that you're going to get encased in you know molten you know rock and yeah, the second, or have yeah. all, all the, the oxygen sucked out of the air region yeah. or uh, the <laughs> ra- <laughs> the road you walk down turns into a river of lava. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everything rapidly plunges under the uh, underwater, and so like in that sense, it makes the plane just at least viable as a place to have an adventure. And there's a lot of cool stuff in Limbo. There's the spawning stone. There's like the raw substance of chaos itself and and so like if you're playing an adventure there uh you know they're obviously kind of i don't know worth it but you can like reskin them have them be at like a you know a a tall mountaintop or low orbit they've uh, shaped their reality to such an extent that they like put a moon to low orbit and it's just there and having them be like the mystics the 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 kind of uh, you know the the people that that remain aloof the jedi order Mm -hmm. the the sort of the mystical warriors who have set themselves apart but also uh, like uh, seek to attain this unity with creation and kind of like balancing those two extremes i think it works well for them uh as well otherwise they're just kind of hidden you have to mm-hmm. like really work hard to uh, you know put them, bring them in. Anyway. Oh, definitely, and and also I love the idea of a like a moon base uh, oh, as yeah. as a kind of a forward outpost to keep an eye on their more violent. Um, oh, certainly, brothers. right, yeah, yeah. You know, kind of, Yonkey are out there somewhere. Yeah, it's just a, kind of like a peephole into the astral plane, yes. so they can keep an eye on them up there. You know? Yeah, yeah, definitely, and I, I kind of like I I like uh, you know mixing things up with the planes uh, as regard to that. So sometimes Limbo is more like the fourth edition, like Elemental Chaos. In which case, like that's going to approach through these transitive planes, and you'll be able to see it through there. And mm-hmm. mixing mixing everything up and sort of like blurring the lines between what's a plane, what's a planet, what's a dimension, uh, can give you these weird situations where you find yourself adventuring in outer space. What is the <laughs> difference between all these? Well, it depends on when you ate. Yeah. What? Right, yeah. <laughs> the Gith Yonki have this. They they went out in the world. They're a part of it. They've made their alliance with the Red Dragons, which mm-hmm. I'm still kind of fuzzy on why or how that the history of that personally, but just. They, for some reason, silver swords, red dragons, and psionic powers are what I think of when I think of Githyanki. They live in those dead gods on the astral sea, and they 
their raiding for treasure and, and slaves themselves, you know, like this, to do their own yeah. uh, do their own thing. But it's, it's like a vicious cycle. It really is. Mm-hmm. It really is. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's it's very narrow focused lore. Yeah. But in that sense, you can also take and strip it away and be like. You can do anything with it, right? You can do anything with it. You can turn them kind of more and make them a bit more, like, ghoulish, almost, that they're not, they're quasi-dead, you mm-hmm. know? Um, or do something with their, uh, with their Lich Queen, uh, Vlokith, who's sort of, like, maybe she's going to try to replace Vecna or a Sararak or something as, as the big bad Lich uh, of D&D. Those things hold promise, but... I just feel like right now they're they're really underused. Well, they're underused and a little underserved. Certainly, so yeah. So in that uh, in that vein, <laughs> let's go ahead and move on uh-huh. to the uh, to the stats. Yes, the uh, stats. The tale of the tape, so to speak, in this uh, eternal hmm. struggle between these two these two separate sure. races. Sure. Um, so the gith. Uh, first off, the only thing they share is a movement speed and uh, uh, a plus one to int. Yeah, that's really it. That, it's, these are different than most of the other uh, races that have like you know the, the base and then the sub race, and it's almost like the the base in this one is the, it's like they switch positions. Mm-hmm. The one that gives you the more uh, benefits and and sort of like the stronger character is the sub option, whereas yeah. the base is just like yeah, you walk around, you got. Dark vision. I guess what they're trying to do is show the further divide of the races. I mean, it does highlight that rather well. Right. right. Um, and, and gives you the, some interesting things because that plus one int is the plus one, right? It's the, it's the minor of the two bonuses, yeah. whereas usually you get the major of the two bonuses from your base and then the minor of the bonus from your sub. Mm-hmm. Then this is a, just, just different. And switching it around, I think, does reinforce what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, that divide. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, moving into the Githyanki. Uh, in that, in true Gish fashion, with that plus one int, they couple it with plus two to strength. Yes. Because, you know, you got to be able to swing the sword and the spell. It's a narrow focus, this edition. And I, I think it's one of those where it's like it's carried over from other editions, strength int. That's the mage fighter stats. But when I'm kind of looking at it and thinking about, like, you know, what is it that, uh, that I would want from this archetype, I kind of like, like strength seems weird. It really fits such a narrow band of, of uh, you know, basically Blade Singer and Eldritch Knight. Now mm. I'm thinking about it. Yeah, <laughs> and it's. Would you, would you let your players play a gift? Oh yeah, Singer? yeah, I certainly would. Yeah, I think that that it's just a package of rules that uh, you know to describe a kind of you know mixing of, of sword and spell. And given the fact that, like, if there's any other <laughs> race in D and D that should be able to combine ma- fighting and mm. and, uh, and magic, it is the gift. And I have no problem giving them access to blade singing, yeah. and some rename stuff. And with, and I'm sorry, but with a race that is what supposedly eternal on their own plane. Oh sure. Who's to say they hadn't grabbed a few elves? Yeah. Drug them back and be like, teach us. Teach us. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You gotta teach us. Uh, so there's that. Maybe I think Eldritch Knight though is probably the stronger choice, just because it would, is going to benefit more from that uh, the plus two to strength. Oh yeah. But you know you can still have a lot of fun with the uh, with the Blade Singer. I think mostly though these two races are going to come into their own when we get a Mystic. We get like an actual psionic class, yeah. and and it's not just um, you know the Playtest version that we have. I think we'll see these, uh, ho- and actually hopefully uh, get some real psionic, innate psionic ability. We'll talk uh, about that. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're going to get to that. So they have this uh, this decadent mastery, which you you know you get an extra language and an uh-huh. extra tool. Because, yeah. I mean, I I get it. I love those. Yeah. Uh, because they have a, a shitload of time to just learn. Just learn things. They yeah they've got this sort of like I said decadent mastery. They've got the time. They can mm-hmm. just wallow and lounge about. Uh, and you know, so you notice that these things are not things that necessarily require you to interact with anyone else or or like make changes to your environment. You just like read up, study on it, things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I like it because it lets you customize a bit more. Anything that gives you uh, another proficiency is fun, but the, um, like, I I just don't know that between that and Marshall uh, Prodigy and the Psionics that I that it's enough. Yeah, you know. Well, I mean, I see what they're doing with Marshall Prodigy. I mean, light, medium armor, short, long sword, and great sword. Yeah. So you can be a straight up wizard running uh-huh. around in medium armor and a great, <laughs> great sword, sword strapped across your back. Sure. But yeah, you're running around with all this shit strapped. I mean, you know, yeah. decked out. I mean, and maybe you don't need to be a blade singer at that point. You just need to be an abjurer, which Certainly is kind of right. Where I'm, <laughs> right. An abjurer and evoker, because <laughs> um, you can rich the shit up. Medium armor. Uh, that, so that's really good for um, you know for wizards or, or something like that. It's going to get you more AC, I think, than than just having say mage armor on but medium armor is in that weird place where for like frontline fighters 
if you're not willing to invest in the 16 dexterity and medium armor master mm -hmm. it, and put a shield with it and but yeah then it's maybe not as good and and you might uh, you know I, I don't know you might already have access to like heavy armor and just go with that because the other option then is say go light armor in which case you'd need an even higher dexterity yeah and not so having a bonus to mad. that now you're pretty mad and and, it, it, and and so you know I think just the medium armor is going to get more use out of non warrior types yeah. Who otherwise don't have access to yeah, it. Just have a, yeah, just to have a decent AC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, um, yeah, you could pretty easily grab a, a 16 AC with this. Yeah. You throw a shield on top of that, and you're hitting 21, which sure. is, you know, yeah. it's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, now, shield spell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Shield yeah, spell. That's what, it, that's what I meant. That's a damn fine shield, man. Where are no, you no, no. that? But I only say that to, to lead into the <laughs> uh, to the Gith Yankee Psionic in the fact that, you know, you get Mage Hand as a cantrip. Uh huh. Third level, you get jump. Fifth yep. level, you get misty step. Yeah. Which, of course, misty step once a day. That's not nothing bad. to scoff at. That's nothing to scoff at. You know, especially if you otherwise don't have access to it, or you know, you wouldn't have access to it for a lot longer. Like, say, if you were an Eldritch Knight or something. I just am. I'm struggling to to see. Like, maybe I'm just not that familiar with Gith lore. They, they seem like random sort of spells. Like, there's not a theme going on. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like at first we're like, okay. Mage hand, that's sort of like a telekinesis, but am I a mind mage scion or am I like a body scion? I think that what they're trying to do with this is really kind of show you a Jedi. It you know, really a little feels bit of that telekinesis. Way. It really does feel that you way. can do the force jump, right? <laughs> yep. And then they and then they get and then the misty steps thrown in. Now, as a for a monster, that's really cool because it's you know players don't usually expect it and it's kind of fun to do. But it's I almost would have rather seen instead of jump maybe like. Shield, shield, Sorry. Re reduce and large. <laughs> you know what I mean for for more uh, or enhance ability for that second level feature that would play on the same themes that we've got here. Jump is a fun spell, not usually picked uh, by first level. Or usually one of those that's ranked rather low and not usually chosen. But hey, it's concentrationless. First and second level, it might be your only option, and yeah, but, it yeah, looks but, cool. Yeah, if you if you don't have <laughs> levitate, and you don't want to want to worry about that rope, sure. I mean, jumping up on a wall, you know, you can get you can get some decent ups with yeah. it. It's yeah. it's one of those spells I, I I enjoy taking when I can. Yes, yeah. just because I use it. It's one that I think gets overlooked because it's just it yeah it allows you to jump. At the same time, like, do your combats not have a lot of levels and, and, and sort of tiers where being able to hop and jump and leap without needing to use your concentration mm -hmm. would be advantageous or fun or, or a satisfying experience? Try so, it out. Yeah, most times, uh, you know, like I said, if the spell isn't working, it's probably because there's not a situation presented for it to be effective in. So let's get on to the, uh, to the more uh, passive cousin, cousins yes. uh, that gets their eye. Mm. So they get the plus two wisdom. That makes sense, you know, if we want to be a little bit more reflective. Sure. Uh, uh, you know, and they tend towards lawful neutral, uh -huh. which, which uh -huh. you know, if you're living on limbo, you're going to need that. Sure, yeah. Um, uh, but they have mental discipline, uh, mm -hmm. so advantage versus tr charm and frighten. Do you think that that is uh, enough, uh, comparatively think, speaking? I was going to say, do I think it's comparable to... I mean, all of it, to... comparable to the Gith Yankee, they get decadent mastery and martial prodigy. You get a lot of proficiencies. Yeah, I was going to say, they get, get like six new proficiencies. You're getting six new proficiencies like that, yeah. versus advantage on Charm and Frighten. I mean, Charm I, I, and Frighten is, is good, but... Yeah, 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 yeah. You could also get immunity from it, from protection from you know evil, depending on the source of it. I, I, yeah, it's good. It's nice. I, I, I kind of think that maybe both of them should get it because it reflects that uh, the fact that they are psionic and they are they do they're very disciplined but and they were covered, they and they were charmed for so long sure yeah it might just not I'm glad you said that yeah. <laughs> uh, because it's just kind of like yeah you, it seems like both of them should have yeah you know had yeah. a little bit more resistance to being taken over just a little bit yeah how else did they get out so uh, in that sense I no I don't think it's necessarily equal to uh, decadent mastery or martial prowess but I also think it's sort of if they had something comparable to those two and I don't mm -hmm. see why they couldn't you know focused mastery it could be even different there you know pick uh, a language and a you know some other kind of uh, tool talent or something or um, you know martial prodigy probably just poured it over entirely although uh, Gitzerai seem to be focused more on like monks and uh, you know take advantage of that high wisdom, but like wisdom int. Can you think of anything that would that would be? I mean, like there's knowledge clerics that might use wisdom int, but surely there's something else that would benefit from having both of those. But nothing comes up to me. I mean, uh, do, uh, do, uh, do, I, do, I got nothing. Do, <laughs> yeah, so. I don't know. I, I especially like the Githyanki. I can look at and I go, you know, they're kind of like a hobgoblin, 
in that they've got a weird collection of powers that are sort of related to being a warrior class, but not necessarily like directly tied to it. Mm -hmm. It's just enough to make me go, yeah, I, I would play that. You know, that seems fun. The Gitzerai is just like three spells that I can cast once a day, or two of them I can cast once a day, and some mm -hmm. advantage on two saves. Charm Frightened are not pleasant effects, so you would want to be out of there, but like with this, I'd just be like, you're immune to Charm or Frightened. Like if this is all you're gonna get, you're just immune to it. You know, yeah. train yourself to not not uh, worry about those things. So. Yeah, and uh, in rounding out those powers, there uh, they get Mage Hand as well. Yeah, uh, and they get Shield, even though they're not the martial character. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. Okay. No. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I, guess, I, I guess maybe since they don't get the the armor proficiencies, that's uh -huh. why they gave them Shield, since yeah. it's more of a mental defense. Sure. Yeah. yeah like as a opposed to physical uh, deflection. Mm -hmm. uh, -huh. uh And then detect thoughts. I get that. You know, that's they. You know, yeah. being mental beings like. You're obviously going to be able to detect other other minds. Sure, sure. Uh, if I, that is your focus. Sure. I, I mean, I even have given them telepathy as a as an ability that they all have. You wow. know, maybe something like sixty feet or thirty feet. You know, might not be much, but just because to further reinforce that or something. But you could easily change some of these. You could give like instead of shield, you give catapult, and that represents more of a building on mage hand of, of you being able to move something uh, from a distance. And now this one's just fast and and, and violent. And, mm -hmm. and, Maybe like at, uh, you know, uh, you get like levitate, but usable only on other people or something like that for, for the, uh, the fifth level one. Just because like, yeah, you're lifting them up, you're moving them around, you're, you're just sort of manipulating uh, the environment with your telekinesis. So Yeah, you got some Ewoks to scare. It, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I would start with, <laughs> with these uh, to, to just sort of like tie them together and make them more cohesive. It's worth noting that because they are psionics, they require no components, and that means verbal, somatic, and material. So yeah. these, are, these powers do just manifest. They yeah. can't be counterspelled. They can't be, uh, I suppose they could be dispelled. Like, detect thoughts could probably be dispelled, but most of the others, you know, yeah. jump into tech thoughts. And things like yeah, that. I mean, by the wording of the abilities, it does say this allows you to cast the spell blah, 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 yeah. and it refers to it as a spell. So I would say, yeah, you could dispel it, but no, I'm sorry. Yeah. You can't counterspell when somebody's just looking at you and an effect happens. Right, right, what right. What are you reacting to? The effect already happened. Yeah. So you can't... You can't counter it. You yeah. have to see it being cast, and, and I do I do keep that, uh, keep that in mind. It's a good first pass. You know, it would be nice to see more of, like, different options here. Are, are really, there's only these two gif. There aren't people who are, you know, say, gif Yankee, but... Are, are secretly more sympathetic towards Gith Zerai. They're just not going to ever go there. You know, like, let's mm -hmm. complicate them a bit. Give us something a bit, uh, a bit to chew on and, and like, c consider and ponder as we're thinking about their place in our campaign. Mm -hmm. In terms of, like, the classes that they fit, whether it's Bladesinger, Eldritch Knight, or, or some kind of monk, they don't have anything yet that makes them seem, like, so good that what I would pick them over the exclusion of anyone else. I might consider them, but I, I, I don't see myself playing one. Uh, yeah, it's much. yeah, it's uh, especially with the Giz Zero. I, I want to want to like them better, just because I, I, you know, I, I I tend towards martial characters, but more specifically monks. Sure. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't really support that that <laughs> well. Not really? And no. It's just like. You know, it's one of those things where, I mean, even you see comments all the time about the Gith, and it's kind of like everybody's like, that's it? Like, that's all you get? Sure, yeah, right? you just get that. Yeah, that's um, it. And, yeah. and you have to wonder if, the, if there's correlation or causation on why people aren't playing them as much. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I know that they were not only added recently. In yeah, they only really ratted. I mean, like, there's the monsters in the, in the main manual, uh, mm -hmm. and they give you some, a, a nice variety there, but there's not rules for how to create characters for them in 5th, and then Mordenkindness yeah. comes out and gives you rules for them, and it's and just they give like, you a little bit of the history between them. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, but it's not the extensive treatment that, say, like, Volo, the Volo's got, or or even really anything, like, new that we're seeing. It's sort of the same mm -hmm. old uh, kind, of, kind of race options. It's one of those things where when you, you look at these D&D races and it's like, all right, who are these made for? Who's playing them? Where's the demand? Where's the, the, mm -hmm. the niche that's being filled? For me, I, I, I still read a lot of Pathfinder stuff because I like just inspiration for D&D games, and I'll find the similar thing there where it's like, geez, there's, like, 20 new races in this thing. Like, one or two of them are really cool, but I, I think it works best when you take it and you make it your own. Like, you don't have to do the whole, they're a lithid, you know, former lithids. What if they're currently, you know, working for lithids? What if you encounter the gift before they split into Zerai and Yankee, and they instead are just the gift, and they're a part, they're the foot soldiers and laborers and servile class of the lithids, or, you know, a different take on elves, uh, people from the future 
that have come to the past to like mm -hmm. avert some great disaster and they just rolling around doing bizarre things mm -hmm. <laughs> you know they because they don't have a lot to them and because they have what they do have is very alien very foreign you can like draw on that for inspiration but come up with something completely new without yeah. ever really um you know needing to step on many toes and then you also have like a nice kind of space astral viking mm -hmm. kind of foe that you can fight and negotiate with and, and all that and, yeah yeah, or you just make you make a Gith yeah. Yankee artificer and you have the Green Goblin. Yes, yes you would. <laughs> <laughs> if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Web DM exists thanks to our Patreon patrons, the Web Demons. If you join the Web Demons, you'll get our weekly podcast, show audio, discounts that'll save you way more than $5 a month on books and dice, and so much more. Check out our free podcast episodes right now, including our free interview with Luke Gygax about all things D&D. If you like our advice for your games, then why don't you come check us out and watch us play? Yeah, we've got games on Twitch every week, and they're archived on our second YouTube channel, WebDM Plays. Thanks for watching. No, it's like a lot. She just does like live cam stuff, so that's the thing. It's like, it's just her doing her thing. Doing your uh, thing. Doing herself. Doing your. Mostly doing herself, but. <laughs> Could be a, you could get, you could get, you could become a cam boy. I mean, you know, I've you thought about to it. Make some extra <laughs> I'm like, I could work from home. A cam boy. Most of the people that know me would never know that I was doing know. this. Nobody would ever know. You know? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Being on WebDM, unless it was, I did a, I did a mask thing. You had to do a mask. You, you know, know, but yeah. eventually people would notice. They might notice. Um, especially once they Trav uses this as a stinger. Yeah. But. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but you could easily do a camboy situation, and you just like, what do you do all day? Well, I just talk to my chat and jerk off. Talk to my chat and jerk off. What do you do all day now on Twitch? <laughs> just jerk just off and turn, separately turn talk to, to a different chat. Yeah, yeah. could I could uh, I could uh, finish those two together. <laughs> you just and then you could, like you could just combine it, and it could be like a D and D situation as well. Like well, just get it all mix it all up. I mean, when you start combining those kind of dungeons and those kind of dragons, dungeons and strap-ons. Dungeons and strap-ons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. You don't want to lose a fight in dungeons and strap-ons. Yeah. Why? Well, you'll find out. I mean, maybe you do. Maybe you go to <laughs> Well, I mean, if you're into fight. that. If you're into that. You're into it. Um. That's something you're into. Uh. <laughs> Are you warmed up? Yeah. I'm okay. I'm, I'm just warmed up for a minute. Loosen up. Okay. Stretch. <clears throat>